tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know where I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Joining me as not as always, but again, <laughs> apparently he was somewhere else when we were supposed to record uh, on the last episode, but he joins us back. He has not been deported. Xavier Guerrero. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who, who, who <laughs> did the rock? Who did the rock? Did, did no, Johnny... we just sat, we waited, and nobody came in. Uh, no rock. Damn, sad. And then, and then on the ones and twos, to love them is to know them. To know them is to love them. Carl, but the, also here, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good I to see am you. fabulous. So, uh, Johnny, thank you so much for joining us on both these episodes that come out. <laughs> uh, guys, we have a great show for you. We have the Re reality czars on. We have uh, the Paranoid American and Nate's coming on. So we're very excited about that. Good Big show. show coming up. Uh, you guys will enjoy it. We start off on Bigfoot, but we get weird. And that's what we're about. High weirdness on the show. Everything about that. So real quick, before we go, go to samtriplee.com. Check out the dates. I don't know why Comedy Chaos is still up there, but I'm going to be on Pottstown, Pottstown, PA, headlining uh, Soul Joel's September 29th. That show is selling quick. If you're going to go, buy your tickets because it's going to sell quick, okay? Uh, then I'm going to be in Vegas for Skank Fest September 30th through October 1st, and then Morris Plains October 13th through the 14th, and then we have more dates coming, but back at the Comedy Vault at the beginning of the year. Uh, all the shows are up at samtriplee.com. Go check that out. Our affiliates, T-shirts, everything. Go check it out. Uh, it's all there. So let's get into the show with the co with the conspiracy. No, yeah, the reality is ours. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Very excited to have these guys on. They've been on my, they've been on this podcast before. They've been on my premium content on Rockfin. You just got to go to rockfin.com. I'm uploading like probably five episodes a week across all my shows there. So go check that out, rockfin.com. Tinfall hat, broken sim. We don't smoke the same, all that. Check that out. I'm very excited to have them on. They have a podcast called reality stars please welcome nathan chavoya and and i'm working with this next guest on a comic book we'll get into that paranoid american how are you guys what, what? still You're paranoid good. still, still american. paranoid still american barely um how's it going guys i'm so excited to finally make this happen we've been working on getting a day things get moved all the time but it finally happened and we are in it it, it keeps evolving too, man. So like all the all the time that we had to keep preparing, like more stories, more ghost stories, more Bigfoot theories. Like it's all been coming together. So we got a I'm lot. I'm all today. about it. I'm all about the paranormal. I want to get into that. But before we go, uh, real quick, Nathan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Heck yeah, man. I'm Nate Chavoya. Uh, our show is called The Reality Czars. Uh, we're on Rockfin. You can find us there. You can find us anywhere and everywhere. I always tell guests if. You live within like an hour of Portland. Come get a beer with me. Hang out. We get some food. Uh, RealityZars at gmail.com. Hit me up for love mail or hate mail, dick pics, whatever you want to do. We're down. So RealityZars at gmail.com. We were talking about dick, <laughs> Bigfoot dick pics before the show. If you guys can prove Bigfoot has a dick, send to the Reality Zars. They are interested. Paranoid American, where can they find Tell us about yourself, where they can find you. You can write out of the name, ParanoidAmerican.com, at Paranoid American on most social platforms. Been doing comic books about conspiracy theories and occult research since 
2012 animations. We did a show uh, maybe like a year ago on Occult Disney, and that actually launched into a whole series that I've been doing on YouTube now called Occult Disney. And we worked our way all the way from the very first one. We did Fantasia, and we went all the way back to Snow White and worked our way all the way up to, I think, Little Mermaid we just did recently, the one with the Dick Castles. The Dick so, Castles. Yeah, yeah so paranormalamerica.com, Dick Castles. You should, you should get it. Uh, if you get in the Pinocchio, you should get Jim Brewer on because he always talks about that scene where they're like, we, the, we, we send them as boys and they come back as asses. And you're like, Jesus, dude. And, th and that's a, that a link rough. to the, the golden ass, which is Greek magic that talks about necromancy and stuff. So it's, there, there's a lot of uh, symbolism there that goes beyond just the, the superficial Disney mind control MK Ultra. It's like, no, you're actually talking about legit Greek magic at that point. That's so interesting. Real quick, let's get into it. Very excited. I don't know. Are we going to put out the name of the, um, well, we own the domain name, so we should be good. But I'm very excited. I've been working with the Paranoid American by working with, he's doing a lot of the work. And uh <laughs> I, I've been blessed that he's knocking it out, but we I'm not sure when it's going to be released, but we're pumped. We're getting ready for it. It's getting closer and closer to being done. I'm very excited to announce that the comic book, the first episode is going to be done soon. It's called the Chaos Twins. And uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about it and, and uh, when we think it might be dropping. So Chaos Twins is is modeled after two incredibly special little girls that have the ability to communicate with like an entire realm of cryptids, uh, but they can also jump in and out of other dimensions. And it's all because their dad dragged them to some town. He was like following <laughs> nostalgia. He kind of got lost in the sauce. And now these these girls are kind of going on this, you know, adventure throughout the town, going into the houses, meeting all the people. And uh, all the adults are sort of oblivious, like adults tend to be, because they're not connected to that same realm. So it's it's called Chaos Twins. Uh, it's going to have like the most outlandish story, uh, but it's going to be, you know, like kid friendly. So it'll be it'll be a fun read. And I think I mean, it's it's kind of been done. So at this point, it's about how many do we want to print? How how big do we want this show? So I'm thinking we might do like a crowdfunding of some kind or like a, a Kickstarter. But I mean. I'm hoping this year, man. I'm hoping maybe within the next two months we can we can drop a link and just start raising All right, funds. We're gonna, for we're it. gonna have a we'll have a business meme. We'll set it up. We'll get it going. And also, you want to put out kind of an album too? Is that what you were talking about? Like, uh yeah, man. So so back when Nick Natoli dropped Tinfoil uh, song, and it was just like he he dropped Sam Tripoli in there, and it was just like a perfect alignment, right? Because we've been talking to Nick. I've been talking to Joel Thomas to kill the Mockingbirds and Merkel Media. I've been talking to so many different artists. And my my background before I was even at Disney was in the music recording industry. So I've just been like, it's time for me to call in all those favors that have been building up for the last two decades. But I want to drop Tinfoil Trap House mixtape with a bunch of exclusive tracks. It's just all about conspiracy theories and, you know, tinfoil and just have that be like a nice big launch party for the chaos twins for the mixtape. I got some, something else too. I got a, a conspiracy theory trading card thing coming out eventually Conspiracycards.com. So I, I, I want to try to sync it all up together and like blow it all out at the same time. Let's do it. I'm totally in. I'm so excited. This has stemmed from obviously having children and just seeing all the, um, seeing all the, the, you know, just the Marxism in, in our entertainment for children. And I just wanted to give them something fun and something that adults and the parents can enjoy. And if the first episode does well, maybe we'll do a series and see if we can put out some stuff and see where it goes from there. I'm excited though. I am excited. We uh, we ha we put it into the universe and it's happening. And the paranoid American is the driving force behind it. I'm gonna give him a total and utter credit and love for the hard work because he's like, come on, dude, look at these. I'm like, and he's like, he's doing a great job, and I've really trusted him during the process. So I'm excited for you guys to see that you know what how this turns out, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed putting it together so let's get into oh, it one, one question one question uh is it ever going to be in spanish for my uh my nieces in, in mexico and maybe two languages 
Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh snap! <laughs> yeah, I make I make sure all Dude, the books that I do, I, I keep them so that I can you know translate them very easily. So it's, we yeah, we're, we're set up for it, man. One hundred percent. I love it. I'm excited about. It. So it's gonna be great. We'll see how it goes. Let's rock and roll. So let's get into it, guys. Where do you guys want to start? Uh, I think I think I've got a good entry point. Okay. Uh, so so we've got. We got this overlying theory that I'll let Nate get into way deeper, but when people bring up cryptos, they bring up Bigfoot and ghosts and UFOs. This developing theory is that it might just be a bunch of people seeing the same thing through their own different lenses, which isn't oh, too yeah. outlandish. I love this. I love but, this idea that you have. So we've got, I think we've got some some hard evidence to at least, you know, make this so it's more than just like a fancy idea to, to entertain yourself with. There might be some some real meat to this one. So I just want to start with that. I'm the skeptic. Usually I'm usually the devil's advocate in all of our shows. I'm not sure if I believe You're in the demons Johnny or ghosts or angels. I, I guess so. Yeah, I can, I can be the yeah. Johnny. I'll take that as a, as a compliment. But like, so my, my biggest experience, I guess, is that there's these haunted train tracks in San Antonio. And when I was in the military, everyone used to go there on like Saturday night. You'd get drunk and you would go to these train tracks and you would park your car. And the story, which is is actually true, is that a school bus had stalled out on the train tracks. And I guess they didn't get everybody off on time. The train hits this school bus full of kids and all the streets around it are called like Little Johnny Street, Little Sammy Boulevard. Um, there were there weren't any, uh, you know um javi it was it was mostly white kids like little sally street and stuff but it's so creepy driving around and and knowing that all these street names are named after these dead kids on the school bus so oh, people would have creepy. a line of cars and they would you turned your car off put it in neutral and it would roll itself onto the tracks and stop there and it looks like it's flat you can look this up people still do it to the day and they'll put like baby powder on the back of their cars and look for little handprints and stuff so that was like a, a huge thing where I had never realized how many people legitimately either love the idea or just like really into it. So that that's one aspect of it. And there was also a place called Midget Mansion in San Antonio and people would sneak over there. And it was this little this actual midget guy that got super rich, rich enough to build himself a house and hired like regular sized people to be his servants uh, and had like a little midget family. And I guess something went wrong and that place got haunted. So the entire time I'm in San Antonio, the only things people seem to like to do is just go like, you know, ghost hunting all the time. Alamo is supposed to be one of the hauntest places in the nation because all the people that died there. So, I mean, that's my entry point. I'm not sure if I if I believe all of that. Um, and then I was talking to Nate about some of my like ghost experiences and he brought up what I guess I'll call the the summer camp succubus story. Uh, so that I want, sounds interesting. Yeah, dude, I want I want him to lead into that one, and we'll and we'll come back to the the haunted train tracks and stuff. So I, I love this theory because Nate came on and he discussed it. Uh, Nate, can we call you Nate? Is that it? Yeah, are we allowed to? Okay, came on the uh, only conspiracies, and he dropped this theory to me. And so let's get into what your theory is. So basically, it's one of many theories, man. I never get married to any ideas. I am actually very skeptical as well, but I like this theory and I've been playing with it that the high strangeness, this paranormal, whatever the, this phenomenon, whatever it is, is all interconnected, might be one thing or all very interconnected. So it's this whole idea that and this you're going to get a lot of pushback from uh, folks that are really like have their feet planted in the ground um, that bigfoot might be a flesh and blood uh creature or he might be interdimensional and then all of these things have these ties together so when you have these experiences like these ghost experiences ufo experiences any of these like these experiences they all might be one thing and there's all these connections all these things that have have these things that tie them together and so um yeah man high strangeness is all one thing oh, so, so and, okay so to break it down, what you're saying, or are you going to get into that? Because it's very specific what you're saying, and I think what it's I very interesting. Is, yeah, that people's different. So whatever this entity is, it appears to you in the way that you can most easily absorb it, right? So there's this whole cultural phenomenon. So if you're a Christian, you might like if it's something that's like terrifying you. This might be a demonic encounter. But if but if you are a an atheist, this might like 
come to you as like an alien abduction or this might come to you as like so it's just how you are interpreting this this experience that you're having with this entity and it's really fascinating man it really it, especially when you dig into it and it resonates with me because there is no reality there's only perception and what you perceive becomes your reality so like we could all be at the same concert watching the same show but what our 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 eyes and our our soul and everything focus on we could all be experiencing something totally different not that the music's going to be different but the experience of that is going to be different uh, like what's going on maybe like you know uh, you know Xavier's on Molly and he's just tripping out and he's like grinding on everybody. That's one experience. You know, I, I'm looking around going, where's the security? This thing's unsecure. Why isn't anyone? But, you know, uh, it's just going to break out the chaos. You know, Johnny's just like, where, where, where's the bathroom? Right. Cause he wants to go to the bathroom, whatever it is, you know, everybody has their own experience in that moment. So, you know, they always talk about how the natives maybe didn't, this is the story, even though I don't think this is the true story, but they were always like, oh, they couldn't tell boats because they didn't have boats that size when the boats came, even though I don't think that's a real story. But that's I just want to said that about you. Like, oh, Sam's never seen a boat before, so he's <laughs> yeah. not going to see it at first. We're yeah. going to have to, like, describe it to him. It'll what? slowly come in the vision. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. So if you don't know what you're looking for, you see what you want to see. So, so this makes sense to me. So each one of these could appear in a different way. You know, when they say you die and you go get judge and you, the lights, if you're into that reincarnation belief, you know, your, your family shows up to you. Uh, you, these archons show up to you in different forms of your family. Everybody sees different people. And then, you know, they tell you to go in the light. You know, when your grandma's like, go into the light, you're not supposed to do it. You got to punch grandma, dog. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> so you don't grandma. go in. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma, but I'm not going into the light. So that's so I totally believe that you you know it's like it's like whether it's religion or anything like a car crash, right? Like three people could see the car crash and have a, three completely different stories about how that car crash went, how that uh, what happened, the event happened, and they could give you three different stories. You'd be like, are you guys even talking about the same crash? So I, I think that's interesting for sure based on your spiritual beliefs is almost what you see when you're encountered by these things. This, we, this might be a, a little crazy, but like, do you guys remember when the Aztecs got invaded by the Spaniards? They thought that the gods were coming in. And when these guys showed up in horses and dope as boats, they perceived it as gods and they treated them like gods. And then they ended up obviously backtracking and killing them but it's crazy it's how you perceive it it's your spirit actually when you know these guys are going to come to fuck your shit up you thought they were here your saviors like oh in the book the guy's going to come in from the south the guy comes in in these boats you've never seen boats like that so i could see how it is perception were they just not believing it enough like they just didn't see them helping them enough so they ended up not help but it, but sam you said too about the uh like everyone is hearing the same thing or it's like the same audio but you could almost make the argument that that's also completely subjective because depending on where you're standing in the venue if you're tucked away in a corner you might just be blasted with bass because you're just in like a little pocket right or the that um the the concept with acoustics if you go into grand central station and it's like busy and it's loud but if you stand in the right spot and talk into it it can like travel across that arch and someone else yeah. can hear a whisper like like all of these things kind of show that even if the sound is the same to just depending on where you're at physically in the in real space not just in some mental woo woo like you know psychological thing like in physical space it can change and i and i would also say that that's maybe why you can't just trust one sense. It, it's a little bit annoying when people hinge their entire conspiracy theories or perspectives on like a visual thing that they saw or that like they'll only believe it if they see it because seeing is what like someone just jiggling your optic nerves a little bit and making them vibrate. Just like sound is just someone being able to make a sound. But what you can't fake as easily or can get swindled into is the whole array of um, of sort of senses. So olfactory right your sense of smell that one is linked the deepest to your memories it can pull a memory out of nowhere um the strongest like a like a direct circuit to it 
And if you think about a lot of hauntings, a lot of Bigfoot sightings, they tend to report like this foul smell. You got the skunk ape, right? But the same thing, like when people are mentioning poltergeist or like a haunted area, like that it's almost like a putrid scene kind of smell if you're if you're a secular atheist right like the actual scent of like something decaying has a very particular smell to it so all of these could be again like physical correlations to hey like the, there's a similar thing if you saw a ghost and i saw a bigfoot but we both smelled the same thing there's the bridges that you can start to kind of like put together on these islands yeah yeah we'll I dig totally into that agree. one a little bit deeper yeah. Okay. Let's get get. Well, is there any evidence that you think might support your your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, all of this is subjective, and all of this is from like the numerous dozens and dozens and dozens of people that we've interviewed and had conversations with. I personally have not seen Bigfoot yet, and I've tried. Uh, we've done a Bigfoot documentary. We've gone in the middle of the woods. We've done the, we did the Stephen Greer, the CE5. We were trying to do like the alien meditation, trying to call in UFOs. We were trying to do that with Bigfoot. And uh, we've done gifting. We've gone out there, looked for him, looking for some Bigfoot hog, have not found anything yet. But uh, we've done lots of, uh, we've done lots of interviews with folks. So this is all fun things that we have uh, kind of, um, that we've kind of accumulated. So as far as like evidence, I don't know if you want to call it evidence, but you know, it, this is just fun. Uh, uh, these are fun tales and stories and theories. No, no, that... I get what you're saying. I'm, I, I just like, I was interested in like, what made you come up with this theory? Cause I find it to be very interesting and I really do like it. I mean, we have seen forms of this in other things like the missing 401, like the people, mm -hmm. there are certain, uh, um, there are certain what's the words I'm looking for? Uh, I, I'm bad with words, but statistics or demographic. There's that's the word demographics uh, that the each of these quote unquote victims or this people who are affected by this they tend to have German lineage, very high intelligence, stuff like that 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 fits into that demographic. Uh, and I I'm, I'm wondering if if there's any kind of study out there that like people who see aliens versus people who see Bigfoot versus people who see ghosts and stuff like that. I find that to be super duper interesting. All right, guys, real quick. I want to tell you about my boy, James McMahon and copy my crypto. Let me tell you about copy my crypto guys. Listen, we've seen so many people making ridiculous money from crypto. But did you know you could do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy them. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply do what he does. So let me tell you more about James. He runs Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship has over 26,000 subscribers. Since March, 2020, he told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put hundred dollars in each of those coins, it went up to be worth $123,000 of the 26 coins. His top pick of the year, a coin called Phantom went up 692 times from when he said, that one call alone retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800, 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing and head right over to copymycrypto.com slash TFH. That's copymycrypto.com dot com forward slash tfh that's t f h you'll not only find proof of everything i said but my listeners get full access for just a dollar once again that's copy my crypto dot com slash tfh the recession is here guys you can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive james is the real deal go visit the site now Hey guys, I want to tell you about our friends at DraftKings. Listen, football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? That's right, DraftKings, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers get $5 on football and get $200 instantly 
in bonus bets. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. So here's what I want you to do. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use the code TINFOIL to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code TINFOIL. The crown is yours. Gambling right. problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y, HOPE-N-Y. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. That's actually... That's what what led led into some of these theories, and and I think we were talking to Chaz of the Dead. Shout out to Chaz, but he mentioned shout that, out uh, Chaz. We love Chaz. So so Chaz had mentioned to us, and we we went deep on this. There's a haunted house here in Florida that also happens to have like this this ball that people claim came from outer space, or it might be like alien technology. But the interesting part is that like the ghost hunters would show up and when someone pointed out like, oh, that ball over there too, that might be from aliens. You get like this eye roll, like, oh, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like we're serious ghost researchers. Don't bring up that silly no, like alien that. stuff. And then like the alien people would come and they'd be like, oh man, there's that silver ball. And someone be like, oh, did you know that this house is also haunted? And they're like, come on guys, we're serious alien researchers. Don't bring that silly ghost crap in here. And just layer on top Bigfoot sightings and just imagine if instead of all these three people that like society at large kind of ostracizes, but if they're all ostracizing each other, then that means they're not sharing notes and they're not taking each other's notes seriously. So they might be missing like, Oh, and I smelt this particular smell or I heard this particular sound. Cause they're all writing down. Like I saw a ghost or I saw Bigfoot or I saw a Bigfoot dong. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think a lot of this too, I guess for me, I started uh, researching Bigfoot since I was a kid, man. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. I grew up uh, in Humboldt County, like in the woods. And as a teenager growing pot, you know, and uh, meeting old dudes that lived out in the in the sticks and they would just see Bigfoot. That sounds all weird. Yeah. <laughs> you smoking a pot, a feral child. <laughs> smoking and growing pot. I mean, that that's Humboldt County, dude. You just kind of grow up with pot smoke blown in your face. No, I uh, get it. <laughs> and so, like, I was talking to old men, talking about Bigfoot out there. And so I've been searching for him my whole life. And so, you know, I've been into cryptozoology. And then I would hear these stories, uh, especially, you know, um, talking about these stories that had to do with, inner, like, interdimensional Bigfoot. So, like, I would always hear about him being a flesh and blood creature. And then you'd also hear these stories of Bigfoot appearing and disappearing and cloaking and appearing at these different times and having like psychic communications with people and like nonverbal communication. And so this is kind of what kind of dug us into this kind of research. And um, it, it is really interesting, man. Uh, so like, I guess I like to start with what is Bigfoot, you know? Um, Can I, I just say one thing before we get into Bigfoot? The, I, I really honestly do believe the reason that so much of the it's so hard to capture stuff on film is because i think the energy the electromagnetic signals from all of the equipment affects everything around them and affects people like we don't understand how much emf is given being given off by this by that our electrical units to the point where people don't believe in viruses that they, and I, I tend to believe this idea as well is that, you know, when they, they installed all the electrical wires, suddenly we had a plague because that energy was affecting our, our, our systems because we were, we're electrical systems and now we're getting bombarded with other electricity, which is causing our bodies to be weird. You know, the more I do podcasts, I get, I get headaches and I get sick. I do. I do it all the time. I have to be away from these things because I'm con I, even, even my earplugs I have in, like you get the wrong, you, these people, like I saw a guy playing basketball with the jizz drops in his ear. I'm like, why do you have, <laughs> Why do you have those in your ears while you're playing basketball? Take them out of your freaking head, dude. But that's you just where they the are. I, for one minute. Yeah. Yeah. You have and a basketball I do believe in your hand. Yeah. That when people tend to see 
these these very entombed with energy entities they can sense electromagnetic frequency and another easier way to think about that too is imagine if that everywhere you walked you were just constantly blowing a dog whistle right and like you don't hear it no one else hears it and you just in the whole neighborhood everyone's just blowing dog whistles and you're like hey what happened to all the dogs are dogs even real anymore and it's like no, no yeah you're annoying the shit out of them right no you're totally right on that and that does i i believe affect these entities whoever they may be yeah, honestly, the so best I think that time and that you feel the best is like when I go camping in the middle of nowhere and I have no signal at all. There's no electricity. There's not even toilets. I got to dig a hole if I need to poop. <laughs> you know, you feel like a human again. And then you start a fire and you just like you start getting connected to like whatever this is, source, creation, God. And you just feel like amazing. Yeah, I, I definitely a great T-shirt, by the way. You never feel more human than when you shit in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> well there's there's full on cities with no Wi-Fi cuz there's some people that claim yeah. to get real bad bad migra bad migraines and I'm assuming that's a a a sixth sense something something different going I would on love with their to brain that we it. don't get it You you think I you try you think you thrive you think you, no, you I think would, it I would last no? a week and then I would leave <laughs> <laughs> I would be like I'm out of here dude I'm not putting up with this bullshit anymore but I do, I do think that is something to it. So you want to get into who you think Bigfoot is, because we've had some discussions on cryptids on a couple of my shows lately. So I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I guess that is the biggest place to start is what is he? Because I remember I had some, I had some pretty like sweet connections with some of the big uh, Bigfoot researchers that have been on all the television shows, you know, some of the famous dudes. And we're sitting there talking theory and we're about to record and I drop that I think he's an interdimensional creature and dude just stops in his track and goes, yeah, I can't talk to you anymore. You know, <laughs> so there's, there's definitely gatekeepers in this community, especially with the Bigfoot community. He is either flesh and blood. He is he's some wild monkey that lives in the woods or nothing. <laughs> so, like, if you start talking about interdimensionality, any sort of uh, like. I guess even cryptid like anything about him, they they just lose it. Like so I there agree, are people man. that are very, very married to their ideas and they cannot see anything outside of the box. And so that's kind of where our research is. And shout out to people like Chaz of the Dead. Shout out to like there's a few folks out there, uh, like ourselves included. I like to include ourselves in that, that we are trying to connect with like what Thomas was saying earlier. We're trying to make the deeper connections between all the different, you know, all the different folks that are looking for UFOs, that are looking for ghosts, that are looking for all these different types of creatures, because I think if we work together. We use each other's methods. I think you can talk to Bigfoot with a Ouija board. I think you can talk to Bigfoot like using a spirit box. I think we should be using all these different things to try to Have talk you tried that? Creatures. Have you tried taking the Ouija board in the middle of the woods? I personally am very indoctrinated like as a child from Christianity. And I still am a Christian. I've just found my own form of Christianity and God now. My Got own no form of faith. With that. Where Got no problems with that. I'm still afraid of Ouija boards. I'm Me not too. Sure. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Same. I'm trying not to say GD all the time. I'm, I'm like, yeah. GD. I'm like, ah, oh, why did I just, I was rolling in jujitsu and I said that. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't say that. It does have some energy though, right? Laughing. It has some pop to it. I, do, I don't I know totally if it's because agree. it's taboo or because it actually means something, but it has a little pop. It's a little something. I extra. need to not do it. I'm trying my hardest. But some of the guys on the show, some of the guys on the last couple of shows, I don't know if you guys have ever talked to the Appalachian Intelligence Podcast. I love those guys. Uh, they were just on and they brought up uh, something very uh, interesting, which was whether these cryptids could be Nephilim. Mm. Yeah, dude, uh, we definitely we, we did get into that. We're going to yeah, talk I mean, about so that. <laughs> so that's maybe like the the most OG story if if you go through like the Bible as one of the examples, right? So the Nephilim could potentially be the uh, like the watchers come down, you know, they have their time with people. The Nephilim Are you come into out that, of that story at all? What's that? Are you into the story of the fallen angels? 
I mean, I'm the- into it. I think it's an awesome story. I like comic books, it, yeah. so it's like one of the best comic books ever. You know, shout out to the Noah comic too that Arafnovsky made into that crazy ass movie. But the story is that the Watchers oh, mate with people. Uh, people create these like Nephilim giant things, and then from there, the more that you keep breeding humans with giants, they just keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter until the giants maybe go away. But then Bigfoot, um, they even have a lot of relations to him being like a descendant of Cain. Like he had that original mark of cain the man eater the like the horrible smell the horrible look uh, almost has like a grendel kind of creature right so if, if you go with that bigfoot has this horrible like cursed connotation to it which is totally different than the native american aspect where he's a protector he's venerated so i i think there's room for both of them because to me let's just say that you don't believe in bigfoot at all but isn't it fascinating how many cultures have this this exact same story? It's got red hair. It's got coarse, wiry hair. It smells. It's big. Uh, it lives in you know the the mountains or into the recluded forest. It's it's scared of people. Like it has all of these very specific uh, you know components to it. And it's like did, did one person go around and preach that? Because if you came to another country and they all had the same religion. Uh, you know, the, the conquistadors, the missionaries used to come here and be like, oh, my God, you know, their gods are kind of similar to ours. So either the devil came here and gave them a bunch of like devil, you know, information before we were able to come here and give them the truth. Either that or there really is some kind of a similarity that people universally observed and take note of. I think it's the second thing. I think it's there's universal, universal, you know, connection. And we all say in different ways, you know, and as you were speaking about that, you know, I was just thinking about how, like, I, I just reject anything the Vatican has pushed on us. And part of that is timelines as well. You know, like the amount of time we've been around, I think we've been around for a while. And that's why the story of Jesus has been told so many different ways by so many different freaking cultures that, but they're all telling the same story it's just a, at a different time. That's my opinion. I, and I, 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 and I, that's why you can hear the same stuff from the natives that you might hear from Latin America or you might hear from, you know, the Middle East and stuff like that. That's why they all talk the same, the same stories, in my humble opinion. Well, I, I definitely think that. there's like centuries missing. I'm pretty sure, like, when they talk about, like, I'm like, there's no way you got every 100, 200, 300, 400. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I haven't gone down like every year, but I mean, there's got to be years missing. And there's and shit happens in every year where, like Sam says, there's a bunch missing by the Vatican that all those books, they have a lot of the books too that they won't let you read for a reason. Yeah. I mean, if I took over the world, that's the first thing I would do. I would just go to the Vatican, go, well, we're taking the books. <laughs> they've probably burnt more than they've kept too. So if you consider oh. that, how much knowledge has been lost forever at a time. Oh, I like to think they kept it, but yeah, you might be right. They might have burned it all. I don't know. Ah, oh, I just think it's crazy, dude. All right, so let's get into some uh, a little more Bigfoot. What were you gonna say about Bigfoots before I jumped in? And tra- so I was gonna say, this? well, we can start with what we think Bigfoot is. So I let's would start do it. say let, let's talk about physical Bigfoot. If he is a physical. Uh, flesh and blood creature and then we can get into interdimensional aspects and then we can even get weirder if we think he's uh, something even stranger so um like one thing that we can talk about and start with i guess is we can t- we can talk about if this was like a nephilim thing right so like they even talk about it and the whole idea of the watchers and the angels and the nephilim it also ties in it sounds very much uh reminiscent to me of like the anunnaki like the gods like they could have been the watchers and the creation, like the GG and things like that. Um, and so that we could have been these these hominids that were here. We could have been these creatures, uh, kind of like ape-like creatures that they took and genetically modified and kind of turned us into like half gods, half, uh, half monkey or hominid sort of thing like that. And I kind of think perhaps, and one of those, one of the ideas is one of the theories is that Bigfoot might be some of our long lost cousins in that way, that maybe they're some of those hominids that didn't get genetically modified. They're still like humans, but without the, without the Anunnaki touch, without the God touch. And so that's almost the, I, the opposite of like the Nephilim, but that we are the Nephilim, that we are the half God, half ape. 
And that's what like differentiates us because like gorillas and things like that have like 98% same DNA as us. But what's different about us, our consciousness, like our ability to talk, like we're talking th through seer stones right now. Well, this is magic that we're using right now to communicate like all over the world. You're in Florida. I'm in Oregon. Sam, are you in LA or where the heck are you? I don't even know where you're at. Sadly, sadly. Yeah. And so like, and we're using this right now to talk. So, I mean, that's, that's a fascinating idea. And like, I love there's all kinds of stuff though. So um, as far as like, uh, like a biblical connection of what we think, maybe this is again, there's, you can hear my baby yelling in the background. Sorry. That's uh, okay. We love kids on the show. <laughs> so uh, like, I love the story of Jacob and Esau. I don't know if you've heard this about like Abraham, right? So Abraham, he had two sons, he had Jacob and Esau. And even in the womb, uh, his mom was talking about how, because they were twins, that they were struggling inside her. And she said that there, God said that there's two nations in her womb and oh that they were separated, uh, but that they were a two manner of people and that they should be separated by the bowels, that one shall be stronger and one shall, the older shall serve the younger. And you talk about Esau. Esau was like, uh, he was into wild game. He was into hunting. He was bigger and taller and stronger. He was hairier. He was said to smell. He had this strong odor about him. And so there's a story of Jacob stealing Esau's blessing. And so like Jacob had to, he had to pretend to be his brother because his brother was the older one. He was going to get the blessing. He was going to get like the land, the money, everything. He was going to get the big inheritance. And so the brother was supposed to go and go hunt some wild game and bring it back to Isaac and make him a meal or Abraham and make him a meal. And so Jacob goes in there and sneaks up in there and like cooks, like kills a lamb real fast, makes the meal, brings it to him. And he goes, Hey dad, I brought you, I brought it to you. And it Esau is still out there like trying to hunt the game. And he has to put on his clothing so that he would smell like his brother because his brother had a really strong smell to me that smells like Bigfoot, like that strong aroma. And he said that he had to put on sheep's wool over his arms and his dad had to feel it to feel how hairy he was to know that it was his brother, you know, and it's just fascinating. And the two had a separation and they broke. Um, it's really fascinating. So I almost like some of the, some of the stories in the Bible, I look at as more of parables than actual, like, this is actually what happened. And so it could be talk, talking about those, those, like there are two nations in my womb and they shall be separated like, uh, Bigfoot and the hairy man, and then us. And to like, to build on that, what I love is, so I talk about this in 1959, there was this I'm going to screw up his name. He was a Russian geneticist and scientist. We allow that on the show. <laughs> his name was Dmitry Belayev. I, I think you say that correctly, but this was the Russian Fox experiment. And so this guy, this Russian scientist started playing around with these foxes. And so he had, he had like a farm with some foxes and he had, he brought some foxes to him that were nicer the ones that would kind of eat food out of your hand, the one that might come and sniff you, lick you, something like that. And then there was the wool, there was the, sorry, the foxes that were kind of like offish, skittish, more aggressive, would probably bite you if you tried to go pat it, you know, that sort of thing. And he separated the two and he put them in their own like areas and he let the nice ones breed with the nice ones, the more aggressive ones breed with the more aggressive ones. And within like two or three generations, the, the nicer foxes, their ears started to turn and fold like this, like a dog. They started growing spots. They started like acting more like dogs. They would, start, they would just come up to you and let you play with them and pet them. And vice versa, the more aggressive ones started growing like bristlier, more wool, like wool, like this started getting more aggressive, started looking more like wolves. Their fangs started getting like, and so it's this interesting idea. Um, and the same is true with like, with pigs. So like domesticated pigs, if you take, uh, a domesticated pig, a big, cute, pink, little, big, fat pig, and you throw them outside and you throw them in the woods, within like a few weeks, they start to grow like bristly hair. They start growing tusks. They start getting more wild and more aggressive. And what is that? So I love the idea that we are the domesticated humans. We are like the descendants of J Jacob. And Bigfoot might be the like the more wild version of Esau, of his generations, of these people that are, they are our cousins, basically. They're just the more wild version of us, the ones that grew, grew up in the woods. And so that also gets us into like the tales of the European wild men. 
and uh, these big, crazy, like you, uh, these are all documented stories of like these European wild hairy men that would, that were in Europe that were like eight, 10 feet tall, big, hairy, smelly, the giants, like this ties into the giants. And dude, I just love all of these stories. Well, and, and I want to, I want to tag on to that too, because yeah. since we're talking about, you know, aliens and ghosts and Bigfoot, there's this common trope of like the aliens come and they pluck a human down and they do all kinds of weird experimentation on them and stuff. But if you imagine that, like, what if the Bigfoot really was human V1, right? That's the OG human. That's, it's like the uncut raw. That's kind of the one that you would want to keep in like the pantry to always go back to. So, I mean, there's another premise that it's not aliens that are like keeping um, humans for us it's like the humans that are now keeping maybe like the original man somewhere because that original man is like the source and you don't want to lose the source it's like that movie prometheus where like they had the original goo from god but then once they try to make their own goo because they ran out of the god goo then everything kind of like you know goes downhill i think it's yeah. interesting i think it's so interesting i i wonder if there's just i mean like i believe in multiple dimensions I believe each one of us is our own dimension. The way we see the world, the way I have people like, you know, like people still still wearing masks, like no matter how much data is out there, you know, regardless of what you think of CNN, they just had Fauci on. They got him to admit there's no data that says that masks work. There's not. I but live still out right outside of Portland. And I tell you, when you cross over, it is a different dimension. <laughs> it's a different dimension, dude. I'm telling you. And it's just like they're 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 in their own reality. It's it's like it's a simpler version of Rick and Morty's where it's like you just show up and it's it's quantum leap. What are the fucking rules here so I can survive, figure out what I'm here to fix and get the fuck out? And that's kind of what what these realities are. So if we think we as individuals have our own reality or cities have their own realities and all that stuff. Why can't there be even all around us uh, interdimensional entities that are walking around that we never interact with and they never interact with us until they want to interact with us? I mean, why Brilliant. why is it that possible in this realm of infinite possibilities? 100%, dude. 100%. Yeah, I it gets real interesting. We'll get we'll we'll dip into that cuz we definitely dip into that. <laughs> So back to physical, back to physical reality too. If he is physical here, flesh and blood, um, this was a, a theory that probably one of the first theories that really got me into this too was like um, on my honeymoon with my wife, we went to uh, Yellowstone and then we went to the Grand Tetons and we took this little boat ride to this place called Elk Island and we're sitting there talking to the park ranger and she's telling us that like if you accidentally like hit a deer with your car. That's like a ten thousand dollar fine, like no ifs, no buts, ten thousand. And then you, she was like, "I don't even care if like a mountain lion is mauling your child. <laughs> if you like, if you shoot that that mountain lion, that's a ten thousand dollar fine." You know, and they're just like hard hardcore. First of that. all, now I, now I would never call them. I would shoot the mountain lion, throw everybody in the car, and leave. Well, you think that that's what I said? She was like, "Well, yeah, that's a good idea, except that we have all of our animals chipped." Yeah. And because she told us a story that like a while back, like somebody had hit a deer and like did a hit and run real fast. And they knew the second that deer died because they're all chipped. And when that thing's heart stopped beating or was hurt, you know, or was moving erratically, they knew they shut down all of the entrances and exits. Whoa. And they went through every single campsite, went through every single parking lot till they found the car with the blood. And they're like, this one, yeah. this one's got blood and fur on it find the dude, he got in trouble. And so like, that was getting me like this whole idea because I, I'd, I'd heard uh, these stories again, talking to some of like uh, listeners and like some folks that have been on the show, past guests and talking about Bigfoot, um, these stories about Bigfoot being shot. And the second that somebody would shoot Bigfoot, they would go down there and they would be met with a men in black. 
like a man in black would be standing there and be like, you didn't see shit. Uh, in fact, get out of here. Oh, wow. <laughs> and like they would take the body, the body would be gone. And they'd be like, and the man in black said, you didn't see a damn thing, you know? And so it had this, like, it opened up this whole theory for me that like, maybe because there's so much land that is like owned by the government, like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres. They yeah. Have, like, free range like little areas that are like shut off to like to us that they have bigfoot that like live there they have them chipped they track them that this is like how much fun would this be like i I hate the government i'm a i'm a hard anarchist but how much fun would it be to be one of these like uh like men in black dudes that like your whole job is just to keep track of bigfoot and like if one gets out of this zone you have to go hunt them down before some hunter shoots them you know so that i love playing with that idea of um of him being a physical creature here. That's a lot so, of fun. So if they have him in a camp, a couple of them, like in a concentration camps, the ones we see, is that like... Uh, Nobody one said they were Jews, bro. Nobody said they were Jews. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? These poor big you, Hey, guys, I want to tell you about Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Listen, with the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. And if you're too busy this fall to cook, but you want to make sure you're eating well, with Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, the prep, and the cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. And if you're looking for calorie conscious options during the busy season, try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. And if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best as you tackle a busy autumn, try their protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons, including breakfast items like their delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato, bacon, egg, and breakfast skillet. That sounds great. Or for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meal and enjoy fresh Flavor packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. So here's what I want you to do, guys. Here, here's what you do: head to factormeals.com slash tinfoil50 and you use the code tinfoil50 to get 50% off. That's code tinfoil50 at factormeals.com slash tinfoil50 to get 50% off. Grub and love. Yeah, but you have them. You think the one that we see, the ones that we see, you think it's a runaway? You think it got away? Well, see, yes, I think that there are some free ones. And I love this story too, because <laughs> this was another guest that we had on that was explaining to us like the hierarchies of Bigfoot and these actual vast cities that they have. They have these underground cities and like these like elaborate, like high tech technological areas. And that Bigfoot is actually much more advanced than us and has like th this whole civilization. And that when we encounter one of these Bigfoot in the middle of the woods, he says, that's like running into our homeless. <laughs> that's hilarious. I know. I love that it. is actually hilarious. <laughs> and such a great idea, too. That's hilarious. That the there could homeless... be something to that. Because, Sam, be, you were yeah. mentioning the missing 411, and that's where you overlay people that have gone missing from, you know, um, like public parks and campsites, and it overlays with this underground tunnel system. And when you consider how many deep underground military bases there are, if if there's even a 1% a chance that there is a, a underground tunnel network of Bigfoot, then one of those dumbs has must have intersected with it at some point. That's yeah, so interesting. I love yeah. that map. So yeah, that missing 411 map, you can overlay it with the deep underground cave systems and there's a huge correlation. And then this is one that I think it was, it might've been Chris Matthew. Shout out to Chris Matthew from Forbidden Knowledge News. I think he was the one that told us, maybe not. But if you throw on a Bigfoot sighting map on top of that as well, huge correlation. So the missing 411, the underground cave system and Bigfoot sightings have a huge 
covering and it's you, super fascinating. So one of my about, my favorite shows. Are you talking about these? Mm-hmm. That's it exactly. Oh. oh, what's this map of gay aliens and swamps? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No, nah, but I the gay aliens one. No, we don't need that. <laughs> um so so uh in Ontario, where uh two twin brothers do their comedy show, the Smash Twins, um, they got the dirty show, and I do it every once in a while. And they were telling me that way out there. There is a Scientology bunker. And this is like a big plot of land that Scientology has. And you'll drive by it and you'll see people like trying to escape, trying to wave you down. And you just keep going, dude. And it's like some weird kind of and law enforcement. Don't fuck with them. And they're, like they're almost trying to breed like more Scientologist shit. But something's going on there. Like, I've always said that Scientology is a naval intelligence operation because, you know, L. Ron Hubbard was Navy intelligence. And it wouldn't doubt they had a certain place where they were running little weird experiments like intelligence agencies like to do. And what's going on deep inside that that bunker that Scientology owns out there? And I think it's interesting. And... I think that like everything for me is feel like how's, how's that resonate with me? And what you just said right there really resonates with me. There's something to it. Yeah. It's fascinating. And just more on Scientology too. I mean, Scientology did a bunch of like infiltration into the IRS and into the FBI. And I like so many times, I think the government uses some of these like groups, these private quote unquote groups, or even something like a religion that is even more protected. Uh, Cause then they have that first amendment right to practice, you know, their religion, the way they see fit and things like that. I mean, the government can absolutely use those types of places to do things that they want to do like dirty work you know, and because then you can't do like a Freedom of Information Act. Like yep. I can't go like to Scientology and be like, hey, I want to know this. They're like, get out of here. You know, it's like <laughs> with uh, torture as well. Like why mm-hmm. they they take these prisoners to countries where torture is legal. So there's the den- pl- plausible deniability. Yeah. We're of, not torturing anybody. Yeah, but, that's the Saudi government. We don't do know what are. you're talking about. Like but another. I, I, I was just saying another sink I had to look up that thing that Nate was talking about where they were uh, Scientology was infiltrating the government that was called Operation Snow White and that's one of like I mean respect at least at least it's like the biggest time that any third party has infiltrated the government um, successfully so even well, if outside you hate of, Scientology I mean <laughs> outside of Israel yeah totally one hundred percent you know. I mean, they they they're they're everywhere, openly. Dual citizenship, well, dual citizenship. Uh, it's like the, uh, the calls coming from inside the house, though. No, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred. I mean, well, Scientology is basically the the Navy infiltrating Hollywood at the highest levels, and, and they and use Crowley. it. Through, and what's that? And Crowley, that, that was the like OTO making its way all the way over to the West Coast. And then uh, like I, I, there was this funny dynamic where L. Ron Hubbard was kind of simping for Crowley and Crowley was like, God, this guy's annoying. One of those nasty looking, you know, DSLs on his face. And he just wanted to chill with Parsons. So Crowley's like, man, if I get in with Parsons, then maybe Senpai will notice me. And it just it never took off for him. But ironically, Crowley gave birth to what we call stars and celebrities. He thought everyone was a star. And then Elron is Whoa. like, bam, Elron pops up in the middle of Hollywood. And now he's got all the stars. Whoa. I did not know that. That's crazy and totally makes sense. Because Crowley warned Jack Parsons about what a weasel L. Ron Hubbard was. And but L. Ron Hubbard's was Navy intelligence sent in to infiltrate jack parsons occult ring that was w- fucking around with space rockets which is how nasa became but i do believe the reason why when you when you, not all things but a lot of things that pop up out of nowhere that suddenly pay no taxes that's to me a sign that your government right like amazon to me is 
full on government. It's just, it, it looks like it's a private business, but it's really the government. And they're like, Amazon pay no taxes. Well, why would the government pay taxes to itself? They, you know, that they're, they're, these are demoralization things that they do. But when you take a look at Scientology, which was able to enact that religious exemption, tax exemption, that to me kind of adds screens to that. There is some intelligence behind the growth of Scientology and how they operate and how they basically find out if you're gay in Hollywood and they try to blackmail you. But as, as being gay becomes less and less, once it fully comes out, Obama is gay. I think nobody's going to give a shit about gay anymore. I mean, outside of the cultural Marxism in schools, people aren't going to care as long as you're leaving kids alone. So they're going to have to come up with something else. I think that's will be pedophilia will be the way they, they, they control you. But if you take a look at these things, this is how they infiltrate and this is how they control people. But you're, you, I was going to say you're so right. Cause I've been watching uh, like CNN, like a little bits of it talking about Tucker Carlson and the Obama thing. And they're like, well, who cares? Who cares if Obama's gay? Like ultimately who cares? I don't care either, but you're right. They're going to act like who cares? And it's going to be a who cares thing. And then you're not going to be able to use it as blackmail anymore. Cause who cares? Yeah. I mean, basically uh, people are going to be, I think we're already at a point where nobody really gives a shit if you're gay, but the reason they'll use it is if you're portraying something that you're not, you're, you're pushing something that is dangerous. Maybe I guess like the whole thing about, you know, Obama being gay is like, that's the least of the things that you should find it. You should be upset with him about he's lying about his sexuality. You know, I mean, he did something worse than Watergate when he tapped Trump. And regardless of what you think of T Trump, that's worse than, what Nixon did, Nixon got ran out, you know, and then, you know, uranium one giving money to the Iranians, all this crazy shit that Obama got to do because you couldn't criticize him. That to me is much worse than everything that they're trying the to come banks, up. Yeah. Forgiving all of that stuff, like starting brand new wars, illegal wars without congressional author authorization. Yeah, that is Obama probably I don't care the about worst. That's that's what all this is, a soft disclosure, because Big Mike is going to pop out the, the willy. And that's what this is. <laughs> no, I mean, we we were talking on the last show like I think they're going to ride Biden to the very last moment. And then it will be so deep into the 2024 election that nobody else will be able to mount opposition in the Democratic Party. And that's when they bring out Big Mike yep. and all of his dick swinging glory dude and can you imagine i mean big mike and trump in a room they're <laughs> they're they're sitting there they're and they're they're doing oh man what do they call that uh the debates and big oh, yeah. mike just throws out that hog yeah <laughs> game over game over big mike and, if she, and if she and, and if he doesn't you know trump's gonna call her out on it Yes. <laughs> well, one thing he will not call her is her. I guarantee you. <laughs> He'll be like, Big Mike is full of shit. It's gonna turn uh, into an actual like dick dick size contest. <laughs> but that's how bad the Democrats have it that they have to they have to wait to the last second to bring out Big Mike because there's nobody on that side that is worth anything. So it's like this is all the psychological demoralization campaign that that is into but going back to what you're talking about these bases i think what is happening underground is so insane that pe it's like like it, it, what is also really crazy is like all this ufo disclosure and nobody cares yeah <laughs> like nobody cares I, I don't know if they're cool with that or they're like what the fuck man we're trying to tell you that there's aliens and nobody gives a shit. Like I always love when a giant psyop or false flag event happens. I run to Instagram and see how the Instagram models are handling it. And <laughs> they don't give a shit. I guarantee you I, if Instagram was around on nine 11, there would still be butthole shots being uploaded to Instagram instantly that day with it somehow Loving they put, America. They put a little pin, a little flag, a little black. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or they put a flag plane going the into their butthole, going, ne never forget. Working on the rubble. Yeah. Yeah. Twerking <laughs> on the rubble. Right. 
Right, or, or you know, some ten ten percent of my OnlyFans revenue will be going to the victims of nine eleven. Ten percent of my uh, buy my OnlyFans right now. These all proceeds from the my DP scene go to the victims <laughs> of nine eleven. That's completely what they would do. Well, yeah, it's double pe- yeah, double penetration like the towers. Yeah, oh, bang! There we go. There we go. Bang! Welcome to the adult show. Um, but I do. I think. I think they have underground. A bases, a tunnels. I think all of that stuff is all there. And I, I I love the idea that there's giant parts of this country that people aren't allowed into. What is happening in that area? And I'm sure that is space that you can't even send a drone in if you wanted to. Yeah. Right. right. We, people talk about how like um Antarctica is is cordoned off and no one can get beyond the Arctic wall, right? But imagine how there. Well, how, how hard <laughs> would it be to regulate that huge landmass? Well, now if you've just got one entrance into this deep underground military base and that entrance isn't like the side of a mountain and you have to go through like 10 different doors that are all guarded. Now, all of a sudden you've got a spot. You really could keep something uh, completely invisible, even to the point where it can't even be seen by ground penetrating radar, which is how they like find those underground cave systems. But if you know to protect yourself from that, you know, there's, there's like a Faraday cage equivalent to being able to, to kind of hide yourself underground. So it seems like it would make the most sense. That's where the military was telling civilians to do for the longest time, for over half a century. It was like burrow down underground. And I think they realized like, oh, maybe maybe we want to be the ones that survive and just tell them they can, you know, hide like six feet underground in the cellar, even though we know that's nowhere near deep enough because those deep underground military bases go down like, you know, miles. And, and I love the theory safe. that just put on a mask, crawl under your desk like they did. And they taught us in elementary school. We'll be fine. Yeah. Dude, a nuclear bomb is dropped. Get under your desk. Yeah. And it's like it's like that's straight out fight club. Like, put on your seatbelt for the air for when the plane crashes. <laughs> right? It's just so ridiculous. But you're 100 percent right. And the whole the whole theory is like, oh, we've only dug, we've only dug like what 10 miles into you know the earth's crust. You're like, well, that's what you're telling us. Well, also- that that's uh Russia dug, I think, uh, like the super deep bore. It was like seven point something miles. But there was also some top secret underground um, underwater digging that we did with um, Howard Hughes, I think, in like the 50s or 60s. And they were trying to drill at the, the ocean uh, crust because that's closer. So you don't have to drill as deep. And that was so highly um, sort of like coveted and hidden i don't i wonder if anyone has ever actually unveiled that and it was crazy when Ghislaine maxwell came out and showed that they were doing like this underwater um sort of like sea research and so i feel like there there might be something to that and if there are nephilim and if there are underwater you know groups and like these these huge vast systems it seems like they would be the ones that had the resources in order to actually figure that out i mean I just think it's so, I mean, just as, as, as much as I know, and let's say my show with Brian Callen, as little as he knows, and as much as I know, I guarantee you as much as I know, what is really going on is way, way deeper, even beyond my understanding, even though I think I have a good understanding of the world we live in, I think there's even more that will, it's like, Sometimes I wonder, like, are we going to run out of things to talk about on the show? And then I realize it is a bottomless pit of chaos. And it will just keep going because there'll be there'll be things that present itself when you dig deep enough. You know, it's like you keep digging. You grab something like, what is this? And then this just opens an entire world that you didn't even know existed. And now it's like you go next to the deeper one and the deeper one. And it's just, it's just so chaotic and how dark and crazy is it going to get? That's the question. That is the I think it's ironic because that's also what's breaking some of the PSYOP programming. Like you mentioned, Sam, like, 
they they drop this new you know blue beam and it's like the aliens are invading and everyone's like yeah but also like the new season of you know like rupaul's drag race is on so i'll, I'll pay attention to this first and then i'll go and do the alien thing and it's like we're so good at entertaining ourselves at this point that we can just like watch a tv shirt though to like mom and dad arguing right or in this case like a war in ukraine or something it's like yeah 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 let me know when when the commercials are over no i i agree with everything you say dude i really do like it is insane at how much we don't pay attention it's almost like they've trained us to like we only pay attention every four years and that's like in order to have like what used to be three years of just living your life now which isn't sort of that because they're constantly throwing these psyops at us and trying to, you know, global controls have to be imposed. That's really what, what they're trying to do to us constantly. And I think even that at some point is going to grow old that we're, they're just not going to listen to anybody. And I don't know if that's good or bad because when no one's paying attention, even if you're telling them what can you get away with? But I do believe that like they're losing control of the narrative. And that's why, like we talked on the last show, they are now blatantly placing people controlled opposition into these movements sure. left and right. Like, you know, like in the, we talked in the last episode, the manosphere is like, it's just riddled with feds. Oh yeah. They're all like women, a horse. You got to call them out. You're okay. Fed. You know, they're all <laughs> feds because they anybody who blows up overnight, you're like, how did you naturally blow up talking about these things that if anyone else did it, you would get shadow banned to hell? Straight up, dude. Yeah, there's so many feds and that kind of stuff, dude, because I, I mean, there are like rightful like things that men could could if you want to be a wiener and whine about it you know what men have it hard in a lot of different ways like if you talk about like you know like uh fraternity stuff like in marriage like the women will get the upper hand and things like that and so there are men that have been hurt and like so th there's that whole like in and then you see the dudes that are just like women are whores treat them like shit like and you're like like people like uh, you know people get mad at me for like but i think andrew tate's a fed i think he's a giant piece of shit like i don't know why yeah, anybody looks i think up he's to a fed guy. for sure 100%. I think he's a fucking fed because he's everywhere. And it's like, oh, it's, it's his, uh, it's his premium content. It gives money for people to spread. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what they tell you. But I want to get into, go on. Well, I was going to ask you, do you guys think that if this UFO disclosure happened in the early 2000s, it'd be different? You think 100%. we'd be freaking out? You think we'd be freaking 100%. out? Yeah. So you just think it's I think the times? It would, I think it would have, uh, I, I, I think if it happened during Obama's years, I think it would have a way, way different effect. Uh, I think as you get closer to Bush, Bush is dealing with all these fa false wars. People are waking up that they got lied to on that stuff. So I don't know if it would have the same effect right there, but like, you know, there wasn't, there was a different time during Obama. You know, it was like just basically like people just, yelling meanie at each other the whole time even though he was doing all these illegal wars but we weren't being told about it the same way it was more about cultural wars i think there was a time that the ufo disclosure would have had a bigger impact during that and I, social I think media too, wasn't the same either i was just gonna say social media wasn't the same either and people weren't in their own echo chambers altogether yet people were still more yeah, uh, we like, weren't as said. yeah they were more did you know, and um, more dependent on the media and things like that. But the media, especially over 2020 and things like that, has kind of spent their load. You know what I mean? Like nobody's listening to them anymore. They've lost almost all credibility. You catch them in lies constantly. And so it's almost a perfect time to be dropping this disclosure because nobody's going to believe it anyways. And so they can they can put out the right misinformation. And there are some folks that are listening to it. Like I have some friends that are all about it. And they're like, oh, my God, did you know that like th there is aliens and they're talking about it now? But they're almost like in their own little world and things like that. So the doesn't media, that itself... Did, yeah, it is interesting, man. It is. But isn't that itself the fact that the government's telling you about it, mm -hmm. make you question what really is happening? I had a woman come on and she says she talked to this council, this galactic council. And even though things. I'm getting into Christianity, I'm open minded to it. Uh, I'm hearing what you have to say. I'm not dismissing anybody. Everybody's welcome to have to 
to speak their th- what they think is going on. And she goes, she goes, the real Project Blue Beam is going to be the government trying to tell convince you that they're doing a false alien encounter when something will actually come down, which I found very interesting because that would fit in. So when I see all these whistleblowers coming out and saying something, oh my God, giving you the information about the aliens, I go, how is this person walking free all the time? Yeah. Like when you do whistleblowing, your life becomes miserable. They like, they make your life miserable. That's why you have to have whistleblower protection. Remember the chick who came out like, I'm going to tell you about Facebook. You're like, okay, fed, whatever fed the way she was talking. So <laughs> That even in self makes me wonder what is going on with. So we had the blood sows on and like, I believe them. I believe in yeah. what they're seeing. I believe in all that stuff. What, what they're, what they're showing us. Uh, it's interesting. Well, that talks about it too. So like, what if like this disclosure is them trying to get ahead of it and trying to control it and occult it? So, I mean, yes, actually might be something that's happening. And so I like to get into this too, because like there might be something that they've known about for a long time and they know that it's now with social media, with people talking about their encounters. Like I've had orb encounters that I can't explain that I find freaky and crazy and it, maybe that was a government you know, type of thing. I don't know. But I, what I will say is that there are people talking about real abductions, real alien encounters, and maybe the government talking about this now is them trying to, like I said, trying to get a hold of it and trying to control the narrative yeah. because they know it's coming out. That makes uh, sense. That completely makes sense how if it's real, they got to get a hold of it. They got to get ahead yeah. of it. And they're like, let's act like we're in it. And these dumbasses won't believe it because they don't believe anything we tell them. They do that with art movements all the time. When they see an art movement beginning to grow, they want to get their people in the position to kind of, if, if the art movement's going like this, they kind of want to get their person to, so it goes like that, just a little bit different so they can control the narrative whenever they want. But the problem is now is like, I think the people the consumer of information is a lot more savvy and it's harder and harder to pull psyops on people because people can smell them way more than they used to be able to. And that becomes itself its own. How can we create a a psyop that sticks? Yeah. And I think COVID was them, like you said, blowing their load. And I think they're out of bullets and they're, they're, they're like scrambling to figure out how we're going to do the next thing. But you're, I, I do believe it's this is them trying to get in head of of what may be coming. So I don't know how much more time we have, but do you guys want to hop into some interdimensionality? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, so I love all of this stuff with like the aliens and different things like that, too. Um, because, you know, they describe things, especially like, oh man, uh, Thomas, what's the one in Utah where uh, the what's the ranch that everybody talks about? Skinwalker Ranch? Skinwalker, right? Where there's been some people that have seen like little Bigfoots in the same time they've seen these orbs and they've seen these like little creatures. And so that leads me to believe that sometimes these Bigfoot encounters are interdimensional. And like, like I said, I, I've had some folks on the show that have talked about these Bigfoot encounters that they've had personally where they've they've sat there and as soon as they made eye to eye contact with this creature that they saw this thing it created like a mind to mind contact with them and they were able to like start communicating and they bring these these encounters home with them so like uh I have I have a friend his name's Scott great guy he's been on the show um and he has these like these communications where it's almost like a trickster entity that like, like these young Bigfoots will like basically come home with him, uh, not in a physical way, but they'll appear to him in these interdimensional ways. And he says they hide his keys. They do all these things. They mess with him. They play with him. He like, and they have these long like conversations with him. And, um, there's all these really fascinating stuff that we could get into as far as like interdimensional Bigfoot. But I also want to start talking about like, um, yeah, okay, because especially when we start talking about Bigfoot, um, there are these like occult groups that um, 
claim to, like we've had uh, some folks on the show that have talked about it, these occult groups that will actually have full on like seances where they do these like rituals and they will summon a Bigfoot. And this Bigfoot will like appear to them almost like if you're like casting like a, it sounds to me like you're trying to bring a bring a demon. <laughs> it scares the heck out of me. But they bring these uh, these Bigfoots there and then they they converse with them. They like they worship them. They have these like full on. There's like secret societies that are based around Bigfoot and these different like mythological creatures. And so it gets really weird when you dig into it. It's totally weird. Listen, I, I I think this is all crazy. I hate to change subject because I'm looking at some of the stuff that you brought up. Lilith, can we get in some Lilith oh, yeah. real quick? Because this fits in the this fits into something that they were said that was said on the show. I don't know which episode it was, but it was recently that a lot of of the pagan gods may be fallen angels and Nephilim yeah. and all that stuff. So that resonate that. So my whole my whole thing with this show since I started is I have a giant puzzle in front of me. It's incomplete. I have a couple pieces, and every time I get information, I go at some I go oh a piece, and I and I does it click into the puzzle, and that to me clicks into the puzzle. You're actually um, not, you're not changing topics. Actually, it fits right in. Yeah, Thomas, you want to talk about it? Because like, yeah. if these are these creatures, they are gods almost, or they're gods to these people, like to the cult, to these groups, to these elite. And Thomas, you want to hop in there about? Yeah, when, I'm just saying really quickly with Lilith Doja Cat just had a album cover or something where she dressed as Lilith, you know, just covered in blood, yeah, which I is imagery we've work. seen in like True Blood in the past. They actually called the character Lilith, just covered in blood. Uh, he's, uh, yeah. She's an interesting person, and there's a lot of darkness around that chick, a lot of darkness. And I, I you know, again, we have a certain age, and I'm the oldest one here. It's it's kind of hypocritical for us to be calling out hip hop when we all loved metal in the '80s and '90s, but it has gotten really dark, like really dark, and it's so blatant. I think. That's why it's shocking, you know. It's just so blatant, and it and as much as people might complain that hip hop gets different treatment than than metal did, just so you know, back in the day, Ozzy and all them, the, like they got they had people like taking their records, sending them on fire, you know. They were they were they were outlaws. The, the, this new crop of hip hop satanists. They're like sponsored by Nickelodeon, Jamba Juice, Nike. Like it's like a totally different way uh, of 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 acceptance from the public than it was back when these guys did. And I'm not saying what they did was better or more real, but there was a pushback. Now I think the pushback is coming. You hear that hip hop isn't is starting to wane. That people aren't liking the energy of hip hop, and you're actually talking to people of kids who are in their early early teens and they're they're moving from hip-hop back into metal but the, but if the algorithm decides it just wants to push more and more of you know doja cat or whatever then i mean just through repetition people can start to like it right just because of that that powerful drug nostalgia if you pump that stuff at your kid all day and then they grow up and they hear it again there's just going to be an instant connection the same way that i still like he-man even though knowing that it was made just to sell me uh, a product and there was really not like a deep story behind it but i still like it you know what i mean because like i'm attached to that nostalgia dude i i, I get myself I he-man yeah and i i get myself i catch myself singing to cardi b and shit like you said because they play it so much and sometimes i'll be like why am i singing this shit and then you change the radio station but like you said it's just it's just works and it works with the brain they know exactly how your brain they know works exactly and they know. i mean dude all you i don't care how hard you are you listen to a taylor swift song you're like hey i like this beat it's kind of good beat i get it man now we got bad blood i like it I like that yeah, my go-to karaoke is always Katy perry so oh yeah i mean she's <laughs> darkness to her and her dark arts titties I mean, those I mean, things are dark arts titties. Th this all segues perfectly, though, because we were talking about Lilith, and Lilith is just this embodiment 
of like all of these different taboos together. And I mean, to, to grossly oversimplify stuff, but Alil was like a storm god. It was like a god of the wind. And there's also this crazy connection we won't go completely into, but of like the whole Moloch and Baal and like goat worship and the horned god worship and agriculture and Lilith. Because again, Lil were these storm demons and every, um, you know, agricultural god tends to be a wind or a storm god. Zeus, even in the Native Americans and in, in South America, the storm gods were usually these agriculture that you would do these sacrifices for. Um, but so so Lilith becomes this like singular goddess and then turned into like almost a biblical, um, you know, Abramic tale. But Lilith was the original wife of Adam. And what made her unique is that she was well, also what? made out of this clay. Is like, tell me about this because I've never heard this. So so Lilith, this is on like uh, Apocrypha. This isn't in the, the normal, you know, KJV. Right. So L Lilith. And I think there's a book called the Book of Lilith. And she's the first wife to adam in this uh in this garden but she's made out of clay just like adam was so she's an equal to adam and and she disgraces adam in this way that like she loves adam she's got the hots for him but she wants to be on top and uh, and this is legit this is actually in these original stories and adam is not having it because he doesn't want to feel dominated he wants to feel like the domineering Are we talking one sex position we're talking sex position 100 percent. there's 100 percent. oh my god so <laughs> adam would be happy if a chick wants to get on top and actually work that's how yeah, far we've gone with yeah he didn't like it bro he was for whatever reason they don't get into it but he didn't like it and he complains to god and god's like all right dude let, let me get a, a rib here and now this like the symbolism here i don't want to get too lost in the sauce but man it's like I want you to create a companion that is made from me. So therefore is inherently subservient to me because I can't deal with this female. That's my equal. So I need you to make one that's like from me so that I'm always, you know, superior to it. And Lilith doesn't take this well because she likes Adam's magic stick. Right. So what she does is in the middle of the night, she'll um she'll ride him and he'll wake up and be like oh I, I had this sexy dream last night right and this is where nocturnal emissions come from but the concept is that every time lilith rode adam in the middle of the night and he has this nocturnal emission that can't create another human being because that would have been something that adam was you know like going in for and wanted to reproduce so every one of their offspring overnight creates another monster and this is where cryptids come from it's where goblins and demons and giants and that's essentially this like original story so yeah if you follow the nephilim trail and and you consider watchers begat nephilim begat giants begat lilith uh, slash gilgamesh these storm gods and then those people keep having relations with humans and that's what creates all these smaller and smaller monsters over time well, you know, like, you know, we only talk about angels, but, uh, you know, hooking up with females. Don't tell me there wasn't a couple dudes who banged some Nephilim. <laughs> big, well, scary bitches. There's some this, guys out there banging <laughs> big, scary bitches. This was such a real thing, man, that there's something called um, uh, prayer bowls. And they're, they were all over the, the Middle East. But the, basically what happened is the, a wife would wake up and find out that her husband, you know, like, uh, had a nocturnal emission in his sleep and she'd be angry because that means that Lilith had come and, and technically he cheated on her while they were sleeping oh, and, the, and they would so take this to, interesting they would take this to heart and and what they would actually have to do is go through a legal ceremony they would have a legal divorce with Lilith um, because they considered that if she came in the night and now you had kids with her or monsters with her that like you might be on the book somewhere in like God's book. So now you got to get the priest to come over and like officially make it, you know, unseal the deal. And they would put it Dude. on this little bowl and they'd put a picture of Lilith in the middle and then write all around it. And they would write things like Lilith, please leave my husband alone. Please leave my children alone. Leave this house alone and then bury it in their yard. And that's one of the old oldest examples of worldwide like magical talismans that we have. And it's about Lilith banging ladies' husbands while they're sleeping. I'm not making any of that up. That is all legit. Mm -hmm. The original dude. succubus, dude. The demon. Yeah, 100%. Because he would night to fuck you. Yeah. yeah. I can't Thanks. imagine paying child support to a succubus. That <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a shirt right now that says uh, Eve was for the streets. Yeah. Dude. Or, the, or we could have made... Zoltan, who normally does us, he, he thinks it's too uh, 
he thinks it's too uh, blasphemous. He won't do it. What about Harry uh, Mary? Is that is that blasphemous? What, what is Harry Mary? <laughs> we're, we're talking. Into it, man. We're talking Bigfoot, and Nate was talking about the Harry guys in the Middle Ages. So there was no less than three major artworks in the 15th century um, that depicted Mary Magdalene or Saint Mary, which could be two different Marys, as a hairy Bigfoot, like like hair coming out of the legs, out of the arms, out of the face everywhere and this is what would they call harry mary and there's stories yeah that that are actually like I've, I've had some folks that came on and explained to it and talked to it that maybe mary came from the caucasus mountains like they came from like the north and they were these hairy men these hairy people or these giants and that mary was a giant and so was jesus he was also a, and so they're trying to tie this back to bigfoot that mary and jesus were bigfoots you know what's That's interesting about one. that? I love it. Is, <laughs> you know, it's in the Caucasus Mountains, Armenia. And yeah. the reason I bring that up is because there's a there are Anunnaki sites in Armenia. And so I I get into why why are we bombing the shit out of the Middle East? Oh, uh, it's oil. We have enough oil. We've talked about that on uh Cash Days the other day. We produce enough oil a day to basically keep America going. But we the 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 international monetary system wants to take Saudi Saudi money and use it as basically the IMF's way of loaning out money. So that's what they do and so they want us to use Saudi money. It's a system everybody's circle jerking each other. So it's not about oil. To me it's not all about destroying the fuck any kind of evidence of the history, the true history of man, and what the true the, uh, our 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 lineage, our 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 hidden history, everything, and that's why the fucking dark arts fuck faces of the United States are funding Azerbaijan to annihilate Armenia because Armenia has so much historical evidence. Of of I mean we just we have Matt Lacroix on who talked about how a site in Armenia changes the dates of of a uh, man, and they don't want and they're not even protecting these things. There's no security around them. To, you can walk up and fuck around with these things. They don't care because they want them gone because they don't want you to change. The, and this goes back to why I'm telling you I'm not buying anything that the Vatican is selling me. And, you know, we get into also, like, when we had M. Mar Marby on, he was talking about the many beasts of the Bible, where each beast eat another beast, to the final beast is, like, ten heads and seven horns and or whatever, is ten, seven heads, ten horns, whatever it is, you know, is, like, and, like, a lot of people believe that is the Roman, Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. And there's and also mountains they, too. Like there's like a dragon with seven heads, and then it corresponds to the geography of the region where like these hills of the dragon. There's a uh, an outstanding book called Anatomy of Man that uh, I think Manly Palmer Hall wrote, and he basically describes that you could read read the Bible in seven different ways, and those are the seven seals. So you can read it one geographically, you can one read it through again historically, you can read it through again as if it were like an anatomy book. And once you know how to do that in seven different ways, then you can start putting all those connections together because then you've got like the, the power of analogy on your side. I think it's so, and there's a lot more I could get into. Do we want to do the final discussion real quick? Because I don't want to keep you guys forever. But what is this? The Tanit? T A N I T? What is oh, that? Oh, Tanit. So Tanit is uh, a, a wild ride. So if, if you follow the, uh, the legacy of Lilith and perhaps that gets absorbed into like Astaroth and um, Ishtar and all of these different goddesses, at a certain point, she stops becoming as venerated and then it switches over to the male deities. But Tanit was the last one that had this. And I and there's a really good possibility that Tanit, that worship, that was like the original sacred underground secret society to worship the feminine. And if you look at the symbol of Tanit, it is the all-seeing eye. Um, it's it's the very first iteration of this symbol that like we ever basically saw. And I think that the fall we were talking about Rome and the Vatican. 
So Tanit was basically the last big agricultural goddess of the Phoenicians. And then after the Second Punic War, when Rome takes down Carthage, that sort of drives all these pagan beliefs directly underground. So now, unless you're a male that's in the military and you join the cult of Mithra, you don't really get to to observe all of these same sort of uh, secret societies that used to be. But the the cult of Tanit in particular, I think, is a huge connection into all of this, specifically with Lilith. Well, you know, I mean, we've had guests on in the past that have talked about how, you know, all this symbolism, even the, the, the push behind feminism is to push to, like, destroy man and like worship the feminine gods and the medusa and all that stuff so that totally resonates with me that totally fits into that and i'm sure that's why you see like all the stuff you see in hollywood is just old pagan rituals before you know it's like that's all they're doing they're just worshiping pagan gods and i don't necessarily have a problem with all pagan gods and all that stuff i mean i'm still new into my journey into Christianity and what that all represents. But I just think there's a lot going on, dude, a lot going on and different gods and different deities. And are they fallen angels? Are they Nephilim and all that stuff? And that this powerful sect that worships the black cube and, you know, so, uh, you know, like, uh, who's it ball ball. And, uh, who, who's the pagan God of, um, of, um, who's a who, uh, Kronos, you know, like yeah, Kronos, all that Saturn, sh- yeah, yeah, Saturn worship, all that shit. Like, I, I that this is the dark arts, these are the sorcerers, the sorcerers are the masters of mankind. I really honestly believe that, and just not for some reason now, like, conspiracies are becoming un, undeniable. And there are comics out there now that I just got told that they're starting to do conspiracy stories on stage, which is hilarious because <laughs> this these people tend to go with the flow. And that lets me know that we are becoming more mainstream, which I think is great, except for that's going to bring in more controlled opposition to, to say, cra- like, you're just going to see retard saying crazy shit to try to be used as to discredit the movement so we have to be very very conscious of who we listen to who we accept uh, i tell people on this show you're ronin you you follow you have no masters you have no leaders you're your own leader and you should question everything that comes out on the show too please do tell me where i'm wrong i love those okay links give me links let me see where it's wrong always question that stuff and you got to do that because now it's becoming more and more mainstream conspiracies. More and more people are going to get into it. And it's very funny because I just interviewed a buddy of mine who's a comic. And he's where I was maybe in 2015. You know, just wanted to be Paul Revere. The lizard people are coming. <laughs> and just like, we got to do something. Like, I'm just, I think, I think you have to be ready when the time comes. But the true way to the true way to beat the globalists is be a localist. That's what Damn. my belief is. Be a localist. Straight Work up. on your community, your block, your school boards. You know that's a t-shirt, right? That's a t-shirt. What what's the t-shirt? Be a localist. Yeah, yeah the way to be a uh, to beat the globalist is to be a localist. I think that's the yeah. t-shirt. I like all it. All right, done. New t-shirt soon be available. What if your neighbors all suck, though? What if they like are always calling code <laughs> enforcement on you? <laughs> That's time to move. I'm with you, dude. <laughs> yeah. I think about it all the time, bro. Like I gotta go. I gotta go near my tribe, but I like the weather of California, so I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, we're it's- spoiled out here. I wanted to just say, since this was like the the all things Bigfoot, we can't we can't not leave it off on one final note that Nate brought up to me last time we were chatting offline. But and you made a joke, Sam, that if someone's got a picture of Bigfoot dong, to send it in and uh, for proof. Well, there is a way that you can definitively tell if you're looking at a real Bigfoot dong or if it's just like some random human dong. And apparently, that's because on site. There's some people that will just instantly orgasm from just seeing a, a uh-huh. true Bigfoot dong. 
Hold on. What did you just say? <laughs> Nate, please break pr- break it down. <laughs> and Thomas, I forgot what we're <laughs> I forgot this conversation, brother. <laughs> so so Nate was telling me that that there was like some listeners that had said that that when certain females saw an actual Bigfoot dong in person, that it just immediately triggers a physiological response. Like there's there's no way to sit and think, I wonder what that is. Is that a Bigfoot? It's just like they they feel it immediately. And we went on this whole tangent of like, man, that we should write some like funny Bigfoot like romance novels. And I go on Amazon and not only do those exist, there's an entire genre of like 60 pages full of results on just Bigfoot romance novels. Bigfoot so it made me think that's more than just a joke. There might be something to this. There is a there's a meme out there that says, you know, um something along the lines of like being open minded is believing in in Bigfoot. Being awakened is fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hell of a way to wake up. Well, um, I mean it gets into my theory about like feminism, like how they 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 act like they want a woke guy until they meet like a knuckle dragging real man and then they get like caveman fucked and now suddenly they're conservatives like yeah so that's my theory if you're a woke woman you haven't been fucked right that's my opinion right you haven't gotten proper dick downs to for you to think that we need to give a shit like a real good quality caveman fucking what have you voting for All of a sudden they're in an apron they're making sandwiches yeah they're, they're like oh my god kids. i just want to cook and clean right now uh, oh my god bigfoot dong make it cream your jeans bro so since, since you'll you turn guys, you conservative overnight yeah so since you guys know a little bit about the dong is it circumcised uncircumcised you guys know you know about that uncircumcised bro yeah oh, that's bro yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be look like a muppet dick <laughs> straight up that's what it's got to look like. Guys, you came, you saw, you dropped the hammer of the gods. This has been a great conversation. Fun change of pace. We need to do more of these shows. Uh, one more time, uh, Nate, tell them where they can find you. Heck yeah, man. Find us on uh, Rockfin if you want to. We just started a rumble, I think. Uh, we are somewhat, somehow still on YouTube, but uh, I don't know. Uh, just come check out our show. We're a lot of fun. We have really cool and interesting guests on. Uh, we talk about anything and everything. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, we just had Ryan Christian on from the last American Vagabond. So we oh, have like the serious, best. Yeah, we'll have like a serious conversation like that. Or we'll talk about Bigfoot dong, you know. So <laughs> if you want to come and have fun with us, yeah, come check us out uh, and send us an email. We always love our emails. Uh, we get hate mail sometimes. We get love mail sometimes. Uh, I guess you can send your dick pic if you want. We'll see if it's Bigfoot <laughs> dong or not approved. Uh, so <laughs> realities ours at gmail.com. We love our fans. And I always tell people, like I said, like if you live within an hour of Oregon, uh, like uh, Portland, I'll come hang out with you. I'll have a beer. Let's eat some tacos and chill. Let's talk some conspiracies. I love my fans. Well, I love it. Uh, Paranoid American. Tell them where they yeah, can Likewise. Find you. I'm in Orlando. If you're anywhere near Orlando, leave me the hell alone. I don't want to meet you. I don't want to <laughs> see you. Just send me an email or something. I haven't uh, you can turn into a lampshade yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can find me and all my stuff at paranoidamerican.com. Uh and I've got an MK Ultra pamphlet there, a homunculus owner's manual. I'll be doing one soon with Nate that covers all this Bigfoot stuff uh and and sort of like illustrates every concept that we talked about. A I even homunculus got homunculus children... owner's manual. That sounds fantastic. I have So th- have this that. is by uh, Juan Ayala, um that you guys know well here. We love he, Juan. Yeah. So this is all his research illustrated and presented in a 33-page booklet. It's got over 70 unique animations in it. You do such great stuff. And I also got a children's book on here about chemtrails. So if if anyone's interested in teaching their kids about that, there's a Connect the Dots, the Confounding Conspiracy of Chemtrails. It's like a 50-page. Coloring books for the kids, like with cryptids. Those are awesome. Yeah, right there. Heck yeah. Dude, you're doing the Lord's work, bro. You're doing the Lord's work. Oh, that's amazing. That's dope. I'm trying to make it fun. I'm trying to take the doom and gloom out of some of this too, because I think that you got to have a sense of humor, um, and then just sharing like the horrible apocalyptic visions all day, every day. It's not really my thing, so I like well, making it fun. That's why we like to mix it up. I think that is one of the show's strengths is that we don't stay on the same subject too long. I actually kind of weird when, if we hit a similar topic too many times. I'm like, okay, time to mix it up. And I think that's why people enjoy the show. I hope that's it. And 
that we can laugh at some crazy stuff. Cause if you're not laughing, you're not having fun. And, and you know, what is the point of trying to save the world if you're not having fun doing it? So I'm down. And again, chaos twins will get you a day. You know, I, I, I really want to blow this up. I really just want to make it something that people can enjoy to read to their kids and we'll see where it goes. I'm very excited about it. So uh, I'm going to get on the phone with the Paranoid American and we'll set a date. We'll set up the whole GoFundMe to get it going. But the artwork is great and it's yeah. perfect and it's funny. And this is just episode one. Our goal is to make it a series so people can have stuff to have their kids watch all the time. So, uh, and if this goes well, we'll have spinoffs and do other stuff. I I'm very excited about it. I know having kids, it's hard to find quality entertainment. You know, like I love, I love um, Frozen, but man, that's about witches. So I mean, like I'd love to have some just normal things that is just fun for your kids to watch. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this again. And go to samtriplee.com. Uh, uh, last night the comedy store was great. Uh, with the with the greatest line of all time, just nothing but bangers at Comedy Chaos. At the end of the month, again at Potts Towns. Then I'm going to be in Vegas. Then I we just added Morris Plains again. There's supposed to be three shows. We'll figure that out. Dates are coming. I love you all so much. Without you guys, again, we'd just be talking ourselves. I hope you're enjoying this spiritual journey we're on through the world of conspiracies. And uh, like I checked our numbers, we're up. We're still up. Seven years in, the numbers still go up. Oh, yeah. And without you guys, I don't know where we'd be. And we always try to make sure that you, we give you the best product we can because without you guys, again, we'd just be talking to ourselves. And I know you have a ton of other uh, options. So the fact that you stay with us means the world to us. And we hope you guys enjoy this uh, quick stuff about our affiliate programs. And then check out these sneak pre peaks of my other shows because those are going up too. People love those. And you can check out if if he sends it in whenever. Uh, you know, um, Xavier Guerrero's We Don't Smoke the Same. So we love you guys. Enjoy the highlights. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Now, somebody breaks into your home. They're coming in, bad intentions. What would you say is a fair punishment for that person? If you if you were like an eye for an eye type, what would you say is a fair punishment for somebody who is breaking into your home and trying to steal? Uh, what, what's what's what? Would you be okay shooting that person while yes. they're in your home? Yeah. Okay. Here's here, here's here's uh, a an approach that somebody else took. And I want you to tell me yeah. if you would take this approach. This yeah. is from Melbourne. It's reported by the AAP. Uh, a Melbourne man who overpowered and raped an intruder <laughs> will spend at least four years in prison. What? Clay, Clay Holland, 32, faced the Supreme Court of Victoria on Tuesday when he was sentenced to eight years imprisonment with a non-parole period for four years and 10 months. Holland's victim, Shane Cox, had broken into a unit in Melton in Melbourne's West in March 2021, armed with a knife and wearing a mask. He had asked for money and drugs and was illegally linked to others who had gone to the home and- Dude, that is over crazy, oh, bro. Mr. That Cox. is nuts. The guy was 36. It was 36 at the time. He was high on meth and he was overpowered by the guy who was a guest at the home. He was, that wasn't even his house. He was a guest. Dude, there. That is uh, Johnny. I want to, I want to say, dude, this is the craziest story you've ever done. You break in to commit a crime and a worse crime is committed against you. Yes. Mr. Cox, listen, dude, we're not even done. The guy, Mr. Cox was beaten with a baseball bat and was incapacitated on the floor where Holland then raped. Him. Oh my God. You got to beat those words, by the way. YouTube his, will not enjoy this. His body was found at the scene under a pile of blankets a day later by police who arrived at the property on an unrelated matter. He was hogtied. His mouth was duct taped and his pants were pulled down to his upper thighs. In March, a jury convicted Holland on one charge of rape, but he was found not guilty of manslaughter. Did the guy die? No, 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 no. I don't think well, so. You, yeah, of course. You can't get manslaughter if the guy doesn't die. Your rape of Mr. Cox was a callous and degrading and humiliating act of retribution, uh, Justice Christopher Beale said. 
Dude, that shit is nuts, bro. That is nuts. That is nuts. That's the craziest story you've ever done. <laughs> Being high. Uh, oh, man. That's wild, dude. Wow, Johnny, what do you think? Now, if he would kill them, he wouldn't go to jail, right? Because he's defending himself. But the fact that he took his b-hole, he, <laughs> he broke his cheeks. Now he's in jail? <laughs> broke his cheeks. <laughs> Oh, what is that? What does that even mean? Isn't that a saying now? Broke, broke his cheeks? b-hole? No, I mean, Gave yeah. up the cheeks? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I was broke his b-hole was really the, was really the thing that got Unbelievable. me. Unbelievable. So the guy breaking in was high on meth. That's what, what it sounds like. What was the like, guy yeah. who did something to him? Was he just normal? I, I'm sorry. I don't this know. Guy, one, I'm not sure which one was high. It might have been the hold guy. Hold on. Doing so that. the guy comes in with a knife? Yeah, knife, dude. He came in with a knife, bro. Yeah. And he was connected to people that had tried to break into other homes before or something like that. Like, Johnny, do you think this guy deserves? Do you think he raped? deserves? No, he doesn't. No, do you think that. he deserves to go to the guy deserves four years? Four years is a long time. But I, I just don't the thing that the leap, the logical leap that I'm having trouble, trouble, uh, uh, uh sort of what would you say, uh, crossing here is the where the energy goes from I'm trying to get this guy out of my house to now I'm going to rape this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's not in his house either. Yeah. At what point do you go from like, I just want to, the guy's got a knife, I want to survive to, no, nah, I'm going to rape him now. You know, he's there. That's nice. so crazy. Like, nice at what butt. point does that come into your head? <laughs> what point do you like? I don't know. Maybe he's been to like prison out. I mean, maybe, maybe like I'll prison justice. break his cheeks. Break his cheeks. <laughs> so did you, this is, if this is another story that's just one of the, we talk about flying a lot because we both fly a lot. And did you hear this story this week? It's from Fox about this flight that was on its way to Europe from Atlanta and yeah, got you diverted. Okay. A Delta Airlines flight from Atlanta, Georgia to Barcelona, Spain was diverted back to its original airport after a passenger experienced, quote, an onboard medical issue, which was reportedly a case of diarrhea that extended all the way through the plane. Oh my God, bro. How embarrassed would you be if that happened to you? I got good news for you too, Sam. We have video from this flight now. Video has since emerged of the flight in question. Uh, I'll just read a little bit more about the story before we share the graphic video. Uh, the website Flight Radar 24 shows that the Delta flight was about two hours into its eight hour flight when it turned around. Here's uh, what the pilot told aircraft traffic control. He goes, uh, this is a biohazard issue. We've had a passenger who's had diarrhea all the way through the airplane. So they want us to come back to Atlanta, the pilot said. Um, so now we're going to look at someone who just passed a camera all the way up the aisle. And you can just see. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about all the wonderful stuff we got going on at .com. Check out TinfoilHatTshirts.com. We got two more about to go on, some brand new shirts, so check that out. My cameos are fire as well. Cameos are fire. I'm giving you three five-minute cameos going deep dives into everything conspiracy, or I'm giving you positive reinforcement, whatever you need. We're doing birthdays too, right? We're doing birthdays. We're doing bar mitzvahs. We're doing, <laughs> you're about to lose your, lose your virginity. You're going to have your first threesome. Whatever it is, I'm going to encourage you to do the best you can and drop the hammer of the gods. Guys, I also want you to check out uh, Wise Wolf Gold and Silver. I'm part of their Wise Wolf pack. Uh, I'm buying gold for, and silver or precious metals from them every month. Join me. Get those precious metals for the end of times or at least the end of the fiat dollars. We also have, I love some of these other stuff, uh, Aqua Cure Hydrogen Brown Gas. We've had uh, the inventor on. We've loved it. Wiseman's told us about the importance of hydrogen Get it. People, I have people at my last show tell me how much they love this stuff. So go get it. You use the promo code. You'll get a little discount. Come on. Get yourself some hydrogen brown gas, everybody. It's a great way to support the show. Harley Ray Candles 
and crystals, some of our favorite people on the planet. This is a great way to get your mystic on, your mysticism on. You need to fight off the powers of evil and use these candles, these crystals, the sage. It's all there, a one-stop shop for all of your mystical stuff that you need. And our new affiliate, Tim James and Chemical Free Body. I love his stuff. I use it all the time. He's one of the best in the food gut industry. Check him out. He's got the best supplements. He's he, dude, he's got the best workout programs. I love him the pieces. Check him out. He's a good friend of me. We talk all the time. He's got everything you need to get the right vitamins, the right balance, and everything. And if you use the promo code TIMFOIL, you get 5% off. So check it out. Help us help you help us help you. And enjoy. We, we go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.